Hey, so, hey, why are you reviewing, like, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Why aren't you doing, like, animated movies like you're supposed to do? Because life is weird and, and, and get used to it. Okay, this movie. All right. No, the Ninja Turtles is not a fantastic movie. I know! Everyone is totally shocked by this. It is, however, not a completely awful, terrible movie. It's certainly not as bad as 3, but I'm going to say the same thing about that as I said about Shrek 3. Being better than the third movie is not as much as raising the bar as it is stepping over a crack in the sidewalk. Don't get an award for being better than 3. You know, you'd, you'd have to work to be as bad as 3. You know, you'd really have to work to be that bad. Or you could do whatever, like, M. Night Shyamalan did and, like, take $150 million and they just don't show up to work. You know, there are obviously people, not Michael Bay, that were working on this that kind of gave a crap about what they were doing. I will, I will give it that. The, the problem, the biggest problem with this movie is that it is not a Ninja Turtles movie. It is a... April O'Neil is our f***ing lord and savior movie. Because everything is about April O'Neil and what freaking Megan Fox can do to save the day. Like, you don't even meet the turtles until, like, what is it, 15 minutes into the movie? Like, Cinema Sins 1. And I was, and the first half of this movie, I was so irritated because I wanted to see the turtles do stuff, but then, like, after, like, three minutes, cut back to April O'Neil. And I was just irritated. I want to see the turtles do something. Freaking cut back to April O'Neil, like, every three minutes. And have her, like, a seven-minute scene. And then go back to the turtles for three minutes. And then it's freaking April O'Neil again. You know? And I get, and I get this. I get this. There's all this emphasis to, like, make your one female character more participatory in the story. You know? I get that. You know, the, the Nick cartoon is doing the same thing. But it's, it's definitely coming across as a little bit too not... Mary Sue, exactly, because it's not like they don't have flaws, but it's like they're immediately dousing all of their solitary female characters with, like, chosen one syndrome. It's like, did you know that April O'Neil in the Nick cartoon is a freaking alien mutant telepath? Because she is a freaking mutant alien telepath. Who also is immune to mutagen? Yeah, it's freaking Harry Potter chosen one syndrome. Don't work at being awesome because you're just already awesome the way you are. First of all, April O'Neil's father made the mutagen that made them into ninjas. They, April, they were even April O'Neil's pets. All of them, even Splinter. But by the way, we finally see Splinter in this movie. Oh my god. You thought the turtle designs were ugly. Splinter is f***ing ugly. And I know, and his voice is another big thing people are going to have a problem with because he has a very American accent and not Japanese, and that's going to bother people. I mean, he doesn't come from Japan. There's no Hamato Yoshi here. It's going to be another thing that people don't like. I mean, it's fine for, like, this movie's mythology, but I totally get how that would, like, piss people off. But say, but anyway, there are April's pets. She gave them their names, and then the lab was on fire, and then she saved them. And then, like, 20 years later, it's like, oh, dude, you're April O'Neil. You totally saved us. We will be 100% dedicated to you forever and always because you are that f***ing amazing. You, April O'Neil, everything is about you. But, like, if, even if I could, like, don't mind all of that. Like, the biggest problem is, like I said, we don't meet the turtles until, like, 15 minutes into the movie. Which is so... And then, like, the moment we meet them, or at least a little bit after we meet them, we go directly into all of the hardcore action. And we get no time to, like, actually get to know the personalities of the turtles. Because all of the emphasis is introducing April O'Neil and April O'Neil's Whoopi Goldberg boss not paying attention to her and calling her crap. And all about April O'Neil's struggles and April O'Neil trying to get a story and putting herself in, like, terrorist way to get a story. Yeah, that's another thing. Everybody who's, like, the Foot Clan are terrorists because, yeah, the Foot Clan are not ninjas, they're terrorists. And it's, and yeah. And, and you know what's really stupid about that? Because they established, like, before that big snow chase sequence that, like, the turtles are bulletproof. And all the Foot Clan does is shoot things. So, oh my god! Why do we give a crap about the Foot Clan?
Clan. They, they, they're immune to bullets. So why do we give a crap about the freaking Foot Clan? Because, like, you know what would have made this movie, like, 10,000 times better? If you had just, like, taken all of that, like, April emphasis from the start of the movie, and you had actually done some, like, turtle backstory and some real turtle characterization, then, then this movie could have been, like, amazing. Because they have, because they do, like, interact, like, their personalities, like, during the actual action scenes. But because we didn't have any backstory in terms of how they were before that, it, do, it doesn't mean anything. It's like they're totally only making this for people who already know who the turtles are, but, and don't give a crap about, like, the movie. Like, the, like we, like, we get, like, a really quick flashback of, like, the turtles as kids. It's like, April goes to meet Splinter, Splinter says their backstory, we get a couple of the cute flashes of the, of the, of the turtles as kids, and then it's done. That's, like, all the character references we get. But then, but the end of the movie, it's all about the turtles! It is all about the turtles, and actually, they, they try to have, like, these emotional moments with the turtles, between the turtles themselves. Hey, you know what would help with that? If we had gotten to know the turtles' personalities at the start of the freaking movie, instead of April, who we get to the end of the movie, and is still doing, like, regular April stuff. It's like, yes, I contribute by stealing the mutagen, which is something reasonable that I could do. And, and, like, that's fine. But then there's no, it's all about, like, half of the movie, it's all about April O'Neil, and not the turtles. And that is a problem. Like, I get April's point. Like, April is the humanizing element, you know, but at least in the first movie, it was like, it's like within five minutes, like, I was saved by ninjas, here's a quick thing about what I'm doing at work, you know, then I go down to Ninja's Lair, and now we're all buddies. Boom, bam, we're done. But it's like 20 minutes to, like, get any decent, like, stuff going. I will say that, you know, this whole thing, in that time, they were really emphasizing, like, they needed to be stealthy, and, like, and, like, they're doing a thing on a rooftop where they're all like, yeah, we're awesome, and we're using modern vernacular because that's how you know we're teenagers, even though we totally look like bodybuilders, teenagers, my ass. Uh, and then, but then all of a sudden they see, like, a camera flash, and they all freeze, because she took, she took a picture, and then they all, like, dude, was that a camera flash? And that was, a, that was actually funny. It's got good stuff in it, but they keep on putting the focus on the stuff we don't give a crap about. This is the problem. Do I'm not even saying that Megan Fox, like, does, like, a bad job, because she does a perfectly adequate job, you know, even though, like, 50% of her, like, shots are definitely her with her, like, porn face, you know, that face with the partly open lips and the halfly-lidded eyes, like, yeah, it's that that, like, half of the shots of that. It's, you know, she's energized and she's going to get stuff. I, I will give her that. But it's, this is not April O'Neil's movie. You know, this is not about... This is not how awesome is April O'Neil. This is how awesome are the turtles. Turtles, And the turtles are awesome. If they had just given them a little bit more background, this movie could have been 10,000 times better. Okay, and then the, the whole thing with the turtles, like, redesign, it's like, yeah, I'm not even going to pretend. Like, the turtles are massive. And, like, how can they be decent ninjas that way? Wait, now, I will say, motion capture, freaking fight choreography, it's great. You know, for the, like, the, the, like, 20% of it that I could actually see, because, you know, it's freaking Michael Bay, so it's all, like, shaky cam and crap, and, like, like, a first shot in this movie that's not, like, flash animation, it, the minute, it was, like, immediately shaky cam, I was like, oh, I already can't watch this. Please. And, like, the, like, the action you can see is great! But then, like, 50% of the action you can't see because it's freaking shaky cam. And then, you know, the thing I'm saying with, like, the emphasis of, like, April O'Neil over the turtles, like, Shredder, same thing. Like, the Shredder's there. He's not what's-his-face, that guy that everyone was afraid the Shredder was at first. No, that's his student. But, like, he's he's the character who gets all the, the character development. Like, Shredder is just this guy. And, you know, we see him. He's not even mysterious. Like, the first time we see Shredder, he's not, he's not, doesn't have the mask on. We see a scarred-up guy. And Karai calls him, Karai calls him Shredder. Karai doesn't do anything interesting, by the way. She's just, like, another henchman. She's just the girl henchman with the red streaks. That's it. But, like, that's all we see. We see that one shot of him scarred, and then all of the other villain emphasis is on whatever the f*** that guy was, and his backstory, and, you know, his stuff with April's dad. But then nothing's about Shredder. Like, there, like there is a turtle Shredder showdown, but we don't know anything about Shredder. We know absolutely nothing about this guy. And because, you know, Splinter was in a freaking lab, he has no connection to Shredder. No, there's none of this personal showdown stuff that was, like, actually important and, like, impactful in the first movie. Like, and that's another thing. There's, they do that thing again where Splinter gets targeted and the turtles are, like, really, like, traumatized by it. But it's, like, literally the only interaction we've seen between 
Splinter and the Turtles in this movie is Splinter finds out you, you went to the top and then he like puts you in like a torture chamber to like punish you and get information out of you. Like that's what happened. That's what happened in this movie. That is what Splinter did. Cause like, like a really big thing in the turtle mythos is, is the theme of family. Like even this movie references it. The turtles like beat up a bunch of foot ninjas, not foot ninjas, n foot terrorists. You know, who cares? And they leave, like, the Japanese symbol for family. Where was the family emphasis in this movie? Not here! Like, he's always been, like, tough. You know, Splinter in the Nick cartoon is definitely emphasized, like, I'm the parental figure that is totally gonna fuck you up, you know, Splinter. You know, I get that he's tough. But we didn't see any of the gentle, wise Splinter either. Like, the, like the nice, he's the most nice to April O'Neil. When he explains, like, you saved us, you are a Japanese word that means savior or something. But to show he was a loving father the turtles actually cared about, we didn't get to see any of that! None of it! Stupid thing is that, of course, because it's a freaking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie, the only turtle anybody gives a shit about is Raphael. He's the only one who's given, like, something, like, individually to do. Because every single movie, it's about freaking Raphael. But then, like, the only thing we get about Raphael and his, like, we get, like, one line where Raphael goes, like, Oh, I'm fed up with this team. I want to leave. Like, that's it. And then, like, the rest of the team's dynamic is based around, like, you have to just remember that Raphael's the guy who once said that he that he wants to leave the team. Like, not even, like, have a flashback as kids where he shows, like, even back then he was having problems with the team dynamic. It's annoying! Because, like I said, it would have been so much better if they had just had their character emphasis at the front. I mean, this is what I really like about the Nick cartoon. The Nick cartoon really, I mean, partly it's a, it's a cartoon. So there you go. It's, it's a series. It's not a movie. I get it. But they really emphasize each turtle's personality and give them all individual traits and, and likes and dislikes. They take their time to really flesh out these characters in the freaking premiere episode with, with the two episodes, which is shorter than this movie. They have, they do such a good job of setting up all the turtles personalities. I will give it this, like, because I'm a total Donnie fan because I have a thing for action nerds. And there's there is one, like, brilliant moment. Like, they need to get rid of, like, some followers. And Raph's like, you know, Donnie, tape up my shell so I can go after it. And Donnie goes, let me be the badass for once. And then he goes out while the, the snow jeeps are following him. And then he takes his staff and he extends it and it totally flips this car. And it's like, that was awesome. <laughs> Donnie got to do something awesome for once ever in the TMNT universe. It's like, thank you for that. Got that one good Donnie moment. Like, good for you. So, and like, and like I said, like, they're, they're, the personalities are there. You know, they're definitely there. But you need to have, like, already known what the personalities are to, like, understand any of it. You know, and say what you will about, like, the 2007 movie and where the total basis of the plot was totally, totally ridiculous. Like, why can't you go out and, why can't you go out and fight crime? Why? That, that's the entire point of the frickin' Ninja Turtles. It's like, even with that, but at least there was some freaking, you know, we, we at least fully fleshed out, you know, two of the characters, you know, which is, which is at least one more than this movie. They even, and, and it was about the frickin' Ninja Turtles, at least, there. And here, it's not about the Ninja Turtles. Like, they do stuff, but it's not about them. You know, but then you get to the end of the movie, and it totally, it looks like it's about them, but it doesn't match, like, the beginning of the movie, where it was all about frickin' April O'Neil, so, it, what even? And that's the thing, about the turtle designs, it's like, yeah, you get used to it, you know, you watch the movie enough, you get used to it, and, but, like, nobody liked those designs, you know, there, there's the people that were like, hey, d don't bash the new turtle design just because they don't look like how they looked when you were a kid. It's like, you know, that's perfectly a respectful point, but at the same time, you know what that is? That's that's tolerance. That is respectful tolerance. It is not, you know, oh, I like these designs. I haven't still haven't heard anyone say that they like these designs. And and then but then like even there, if you thought the turtles were not ugly enough in the trailer, like if you could get past that, then you watch the movie where you spend, like, a decent amount of screen time with the screen, like, right up in their faces. And you know what the most noticeable trait on their faces is? It's their freaking lips. Because they have freaking, like, injected collagen mutant lips. And it's just, it's freaky. I feel like I was watching freaking Wallflower. And it's wrong. It's like, dude, I, I don't need this. Like, 
freaking get out of my face. You know, just not even like a side. The fact like turtles don't have lips. It's just like, it's freaking creepy. I don't want to look at this. The most noticeable trait on somebody's face should be their eyes. By the way, who freaking gave Donatello glasses? Like who freaking gave Donatello glasses? Who's freaking brilliant idea with that? You know what that was? It was because they knew they weren't going to have any character emphasis on any of these turtles. So they had to give them those like th those things on their faces to let you know what their personality was so they wouldn't have to waste any like screen time trying to develop character or anything. So look, hey, here, Donnie's the nerd. You know, we have glasses, so now you know. And, you know, Michelangelo's got freaking Rasta beads, so you know who he is. Like, it's obvious that, you know, this PG-13 nostalgia trip, they're trying to go for, like, Transformer dollars. I know that's what they're doing. You know, we, we took Transformers, we made it PG-13, we made a shit ton of money. Then you're trying to do the same with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So you know one thing about Transformers? Like, what was Transformers about, like, aside from nostalgia? It was cars turning into robots. That's awesome! Anybody would want to see that, but you look at the trailer and you go, these guys are freaking ugly. Who wants to watch this? So, like, I'll be, like, shocked if this movie does, like, significantly well. I'll even be shocked if this beats Guardians of the Galaxy for this weekend's box office. Like, I will be legitly shocked. Because Guardians of the Galaxy, by all stretch, should, like, totally top for, like, multiple weekends. If there's any justice. And if this beats that, like, I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know what I'm gonna do. It's like, and I knew this movie was not gonna be good, and I usually don't go out deliberately to, like, see bad movies. Like, I never, it's like, it's, it's, it's a waste of money, and it's not good for me. Like, I just, like, it's the, it's the freaking McDonald's of movies to see bad movies. Movies, and I was just, I was just curious, because, you know, I wasn't even, like, a Ninja Turtles fan until, like, a month ago, and I discovered the Nick cartoon, and I really liked it, and all of a sudden I gave a crap about this movie. And I get that, like, the instinct in, like, a lot of these, oh, no, uh, this new movie, it's totally, g every newcomer is going to, like, see this movie and is going to be like, oh, this is the Ninja Turtles. Like, I want more of these guys. Like, no, the Ninja Turtles, you know, back, back way back then were so much better. And it's weird, like, I don't want everyone to just be talking about this incarnation, which is totally inferior to, like, my personal incarnation. But then I realized, like, I'm that guy. I'm that guy to, like, 80s Turtles fan. Like, I like the Nick cartoon. Like, that's my favorite incarnation of the, of the Ninja Turtles. And that's how, that's how people, 80s Turtles fan feel about me. So, so I get it. Like, this movie is not going to take away, like, what was special with Turtles, you know, back when you liked them. It's not going to do any of that. The only thing I can really be irritated by is that Nickelodeon has deliberately, like, paused the, the cartoon episodes until, like, after this movie premiered. So I have, like, been... Where's the new Ninja Turtle episodes? Oh, they're, they're not, because we're waiting for the frickin' movie to come out. And so now the movie's out, where are my new Nick episodes? Hmm? Where are they? You know, come on, Nick. It's out now. Show the episodes more. Thank you. Not the worst thing in the world, but there's definitely, like, better incarnations of the Turtles. And I guess, like, if there's one thing you can say about this, is, like, I'm sure some people are always like, like, I want to know what, like, a gritty, realistic version of the Turtles looks like. And even though if, if most of us knew that that was totally stupid, because the Turtles would look like freaking this, you know, at least now we know. You know, it's like that guy who did, like, the Psycho reboot. It's like, he said, like, once that, I, d I made a remake of Psycho, so no one else would have to. It's like, thank you for that. Uh, so now we have our we have our realistic eyes version of the Ninja Turtles. Now people know what they look like if we totally went full photorealism on the turtles and we know that they're freaking ugly. So next time let's let's work on that. So yeah, like not the worst thing ever. Still not exceptionally good. Could have been better. You know, like just just replace the first 15 minutes with turtle character focus and this movie actually could have been freaking amazing. Then all of the stuff that happened like in the action scenes would have made some freaking sense. Like that's all you needed to do. And that and that movie could have been awesome. Uh it's just it's so irritating. It it could have been so much better. Like totally ugly turtle designs aside. Totally ugly splitter uh design aside. Totally, you know, Transformers shredder design aside. You know, it could have not been this meh. It, it could have. It could have been better than this, is the thing. Like, and I guess, you know, could have been better is better than being, like, complete crap. And also, oh, one other thing, what is with you f***ing 
you freaking 80s Turtles fans in Calabunga, okay? Because you, like, you, like, completely, like, freaked out when, like, Calabunga was taken out of, like, the, like, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle lexicon. And it became, like, a big thing. It's like, dude, we're totally gonna use the word Calabunga here. And it's like, dude, nobody says it anymore. It's like, who gives a crap? I like Booyakasha. I think it's funny. I like it. I will say, they do use Calabunga in the movie, and it's actually kind of clever. That the way they use it. I will give it that. It's actually kind of clever. But like, you know, leave the Nick cartoon alone. You know, do, you know, we, you had your 80s cartoon. It's still there. You know, they, they do plenty of references in this movie. You know, leave the Nick cartoon alone. Okay? That's it.